What I'm going to show you how to do today is to apply automatic formatting to reports that are completely changing in length depending on how the user is interacting with them. This gives your reports a brilliant professional appearance without any effort on your part once it's set up. And actually, it's not particularly difficult to set up either. It's just a few Excel functions. There's no code involved or anything like that. So let's get straight on with it. I'll show you how to do it. Now I've got a table of data here. Now this could be any size table. It really doesn't matter. It could be any length, any number of columns, because I'm going to show you the method of how you do this. Now, if you do want this particular template, you can download it completely for free. I'm not going to ask for your email or anything. You just hit the link in the description and you'll have it straight away. I've basically taken this table here and I've used the filter function to generate a spilled list based off of two drop down lists up here. In another video, which may even be out, I'm going to show you how to create this completely from scratch with some more bells and whistles as well. But I'm going to assume you've already got either this report because you've just downloaded the spreadsheet or you've got something that you already need to format because it's changing length in the spreadsheet. So at the moment, when I pick a different region, one or two, this list expands. And just briefly, it's because I'm picking up a filter function and the which is taking that entire table from before and it's filtering it to where the region equals one of those two things. So that's basically how it's working. But what I really want to do is I want it to ban the rows and maybe put borders around and things like that, which it can detect the report when it does it. So how are we going to do this? Right, so the first thing, we need some helper columns. I've just unhidden my helper columns. Now there's no formulas in here and I'll show you how you build these. Now I'm going to use five helper columns. Now you could definitely combine some of these, but I like to break out functions so that it's nice and clear for anyone using the spreadsheet. So when you download this, you will see you know, these functions and it hopefully be nice and clear to you what's going on. So the first one is we need to know whether we've got a live row in our data or not, because obviously we want to know whether to apply any formatting or not. And what we have here is a spilled range. So we can refer to this range by using the hash notation. So for example, if I just do something here, I just say it equals that. And then as soon as I put the hash key, you can see that expands to the whole range. And when I hit enter, I get the entire thing again. Now, what I want to do here with this is say, well, let's have a look at that, like that. And that will give me a spill error because it's trying to cover up the report. But I only want the first column. And the way I can do that is I'll say, right, let's have a look at the index of that array. And I'm just going to say, I just want the first column, right? So that gives me that first column there. And then I just want to say, is there anything in that column or not? So I'm going to say, if that equals nothing, then we want nothing. Otherwise, we want a number one. And then we get a nice, neat list of number ones, which when I change my filter criteria, let's do that, this will expand and collapse along with my report because it's directly linked to it. The next thing I want to be able to determine is the banding. So the row banding. So I want every other row to appear in a kind of light gray like I have on this report. So I need basically something along the lines of like one zero or zero one zero one zero one, something like that, right? The first thing I'm going to do is detect the row number of the data we're looking at. So I'm just going to say that the row number is this number here. Link that to the whole spill range using the hash notation, and we get a sequence of numbers drop down from whatever row number the report starts at. And what I effectively want to do is basically say something along the lines of, is this an even or an odd number? If it's even, put a zero, otherwise put a one or something like that. Now I could do this and say, is even, right? Is that even? And I get a bunch of trues or falses. And then if I put a double negative, 
which turns trues and falses into ones and zeros, I get my ones and zeros. So now we have our list of ones and zeros that we can use to determine banding in rows. And of course, again, because it's linked to the spilled range, if I push F2, it's linked to that spilled range there, it will never expand further than the list of items that we pick. Why don't we now add the conditional formatting to create this banding effect now that we've got effectively the data we need. I'm going to start by clicking on the top left corner of that spill range, because whenever you set up conditional formats, they're always relative to the active cell. And you just make your life easier if you are at the top left corner of any range you're going to apply a conditional format to. Otherwise, when you hit the apply button, it can change the criteria of your formula somehow, and then you need to go back and edit it. So we're going to click on that we want a new rule, and we want a formula. And the formula that we want is that we want to say that that banding equals one. Because whenever it equals one, we're going to apply some sort of formatting. And when it equals zero, we won't do anything. And then we'll get a kind of banding effect. Now, we just need to remove the dollar sign from the row number there, but leave it on the column. And we'll pick our format. And I'm literally just going to go to the fill and put a light gray, very lightest gray fill on that for the minute and hit OK. And you can see that all it's done is apply formatting to that single cell, i.e. the start of the range. So what we need to do is change that range. Now, we can put a hash key on the end of there and hit apply. That is applied to the entire spilled range. And you might think that that's ideal because when the spilled range changes, it's intelligent enough to work out that it needs to change the range. Unfortunately not, because if I add now another range in, you can see it still ends where it ended before. So that's a real shame. So what we need to do is unfortunately cover our backs a bit and we need to give it a big enough range, which is the maximum we would ever likely to see this report go to. I'm just going to add 100 because that's not very memory intensive, 100 rows. When we think our max is 20, that should cover us. So I'm going to apply that to that range on my Final output, you might see I put a slight border around that. So I'm going to do the same here. So I'm going to change that, edit that rule there. I'm going to put a slight border on it. So we'll go to the borders. I'll pick something mid dark. And I'm going to put a top and bottom border on it like that and hit OK and apply. And there we go. Now you could say that's a great looking report already. But it just kind of annoys me that the border has now, of course, disappeared from the bottom and the top of these reports because it just so happens the bottom line does not finish on a gray cell. So you don't see the border and the top one is gray and it's therefore wiped the border off of the header row. Kind of annoying. So what I want to do is detect the top and bottom row of the report. And this is a really handy thing to be able to do on all sorts of reports, really, to be able to detect the top and the bottom because you can border things. You can set print areas if you link it up to a macro or something. So really useful thing to be able to do. And the way I'm going to do that is introduce a couple more functions here. So the first one is the row. Now, kind of used the row before, right, because we did that a minute ago to work out the banding. So very similar way. We're going to say that we want the row of the reference there. OK. Now, the problem is what that's done is given us the row number in the spreadsheet, but we want to know the row number of our report, essentially. So all I'm going to do is deduct the row number of the header. And I'm going to link that. There's actually a spill range on that header, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to link it to that header row. And now we go our numbers 1 to 12. Of course, when we change the report, we'll get different row numbers. And if we move stuff around, it's all going to work fine. Now we want to detect our top row and our bottom row. This is pretty straightforward stuff, actually. We're just going to say that equals if that, and we want the whole spill range, equals one, then we're in the top row, aren't we? Right? So we'll put, we'll give it a one and a zero if we're not in the top row. That will spill down because I use that hash notation there. Give us a one at the top, 
zero is everywhere else. We can now go back to our conditional formatting and we can add a rule. Remember, I've started in the top left on purpose there. So a new rule using a formula. And we're just going to say that if that, we'll take off the dollar sign in front of the row again, equals a one. In other words, we're in our top row. What are we going to do? Well, I'm going to put a border on the top and hit OK and apply that. Now, of course, that's only applied it to the very first cell. So we just need to go back to manage the rules and let's just copy that area that we used for the previous rule into there and apply it. Now, when we click away from the report, you can see that we've sorted out the top row border. That will always appear no matter what happens to the sort order or anything of the report. Next then, we just want to put a border on the bottom. Slightly different here. What we want to know is effectively, is the row number the max row number? Now, we could do it like that, but as we've put up this sort of live thing, we've got this like, uh, you know, this live column tells us whether there's a row in it. We can just sum that as well. We're going to put another if statement. So if the row number, right, again, put the hash key to make sure it's applying to the whole range equals the sum of the live column, then we must be in the bottom row, we're in the maximum row. So I'm going to put a one for that, otherwise a zero. And now we get another spill range, this time always going to have a one at the bottom. And it won't matter you know, how many rows we put on it, we'll get a one at the bottom and a one at the top on those two rows. Again, let's take some conditional formatting. Let's start at the beginning, top left, manage the rules, new rule, and we use a formula. And this time we just say, is the bottom column. So we'll just do that so that we fix the column, but not the row. If that equals one, we must be in the bottom row. So what we're going to do now, we're going to format the bottom row with a line at the bottom and hit OK and apply that. What's that done? Of course, it hasn't done anything. We need to always remember that we need to go back to manage the rules and change where the rule applies and make sure it's applying to our whole report and actually passed our report in this case. I'll hit OK there. Now we have a report that will always have banded formatting and borders at the top and the bottom. And it doesn't matter how short or how long that report gets, it's going to be bordered and look professional. And the last tweak is we just need to hide our helper columns. Control zero to hide that. And we have our professional looking report that we can hand out and will always be properly formatted. If you want this entire setup, just hit that link in the description and download it immediately. And you can adapt this to use with your own reports and I hope that helps you achieve better sell results faster. Good luck, and I'll see you soon.